Hey, it's 2020, and we're back with a brand new episode of the Digital to Dice podcast. I'm Dave. I'm Ron. And this is episode 24 as we kick off the new year, the new decade, the new everything. Wow. I'll be in touch so you can be in touch. Good night, Barbara. <laughs> yeah, 2020, a lot of lot of 2020 jokes. Welcome to 2020, or it's 2020, whatever it is. So, uh, so yeah, today we're going to be talking uh, about a topic that was presented to us by one of our listeners of the show. He said, you guys should talk about actual versus what if play. So we're going to be talking about those, what that means to us, what are, what's our definition, and what we prefer to play. And, of course, as always, we want your comments on that topic as well. Uh, we get that and what we're playing and a whole bunch of more goodies here on episode 24 of Digital Dice. And that is coming up next. Next. So, bit of advice. What's up? What's up? Um, I n- very rarely take anything on Facebook I see seriously. Mm-hmm. But someone posted, it might have been a cousin of mine or something like that, uh, because this the, this is the only year in this century that the first two digits match with the last two digits. And if you're signing something legal and binding, that you may actually want to sign it with a full 2020. I did see that, case, yeah. In case someone decides to put a 16 or a 17 after. You've signed us. And, oh, you signed this promissory note? Yeah, 11020. Yeah, one ten twenty sixteen. You're four years overdue. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I did hear that. So that's that's very good advice, at least for twenty twenty. You don't need to do it for twenty one, but for twenty, probably a good idea. Yeah, not bad at all. There was another thing I saw this year, Ron, that uh, that I saw on Facebook. Did you know, for the first time in six hundred and sixty six years, Halloween will be on Friday the thirteenth. I saw it on Facebook. It must be true. Uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill <laughs> All right. to go have some fun. Silly Jill forgot her pill, and now they have a son. Yes, they do. <laughs> Saw that on Facebook, too. Yes, you did. Okay, so that's enough of that. Uh, say so a couple ways to get a hold of us. Obviously, our website, digitaltodice.com. That's where we put all of our shows. Uh, we have a text line, voice and text line, 978-751-DICE, 978-751-3423. And always on Facebook, our uh, uh, growing group on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash digital to dice. And uh, we get into what we're playing, I guess, before we tackle the main topic. Now, Ron, I uh, had some time off over the holidays, okay, some rare time off. And uh, I really took advantage that I played a ton of games. I'm not going to go over them all. I'll hit some of the highlights. Uh, but uh, I don't have any time Only off. Only a 45-minute show. Yeah, okay. so I'm going to have to run run through a couple of highlights here because I don't think I have really any time off now to Memorial Day coming up. And I had a, uh, I got a medical procedure on Monday that I'm not looking forward to. So I, I buckled down and I played and I had some fun over the holidays. I, I hit, went over to my Steam library. If anybody has Steam, you know, the computer service Steam, uh, we have our, what's called our Steam backlog where you always buy these games on sale that you think you're going to play. Well, I sat down and I played through a bunch of them, and I actually finished some of these adventure games and played a couple new sports games, and uh, I'm not going to go through them all, but I I put a pretty good dent in my backlog, Ron. I actually finished some of these games, and the ones I didn't finish, I played enough to realize that I'll probably never play them again. So that was fun. I did play a bunch of board games. I set aside one afternoon. Uh, I don't know if it was New Year's. Uh, uh, yeah, New Year's New, Eve. Around New, around New Year's weekend, I think. There was one day that I had the day to myself and the wife was out. So I, I stacked up all, all these board games on the table. And it was everything from sports to adventure to space to whatever. And so I, I really went to town on that. But there's two games that I want to bring up. The first one is a game called Fuse, where you defuse a bomb. Okay, and I brought this over to the family's place on Christmas Day, and and we were playing this for hours, and everybody gathered around the table watching us play. You can play it by yourself or play it up to five people. I think we were playing two and three people at a time, and the idea is that you flip over these cards, and those are the bombs, and you roll the dice, and then you use the dice to cover up the uh, the icons on the card. So let's just say you, you need a red, a blue in a green 
to, to defuse that bomb. Well, you need to, as the dice come rolling out, you say, I need a red first, then I need a blue, and then I need a green on subsequent rolls to defuse the bomb. Sometimes you need numbers. Sometimes you need a combination. Sometimes you need, uh, you know, uh, two, two four. Sometimes you need two five. Sometimes you need two red ones, if you follow all that. So the idea is that you roll, it's a cooperative game. So everybody's trying to defuse their own bombs. So when you roll the dice, you look and you say, okay, who needs what? Well, the kicker is it's on a 10-minute timer and there's an app for the uh, for the phone or the iPad that counts down and it's got sound effects and it's got some lady with an English accent going, seven minutes to total ship destruction. And it just adds to the immersion of this game and it's really fun. So I highly recommend this game called Fuse. It is really, really fun to play. Not that expensive either. Posted one that from that Christmas session where you got it with one Second. Yeah, I, I had a friend come over to the house. It was, this was right after Christmas, and I said, hey, I want to show you this game. And we sat down with just the two of us playing, and we were playing on the easy modes because you can, depending on how many cards you put in this deck to defuse, it has different difficulties. So you can you can defuse 10 cards, 20 cards, 30 cards, or up to, I think there's 40 or 50 cards in the deck. So depending on how difficult you want it to be, you add more cards. So we were playing on some of the easy levels. And me and my buddy, no kidding, he flipped over a card. We're rolling this. We get down to one card. And he rolled the dice, and he stacked the dice on his card, and we hit the timer with one second left before the ship blew up. And it was it was all – it was just like in the movies. It was like, wow, one second. That was cool. So we did. We did solve it. With That's one awesome. Yep. The other game I want to talk about is one that uh, I joined a new print-and-play group on Facebook. Uh, you know, it makes a lot of sense as you go look that up. It's something I hadn't thought of as far as gaming is concerned until until you brought it up last week. Yep, so I found it this this site and uh they go to um boardgamegeek.com is where they they have a lot of these games and um one of the other games I was playing was a uh, Deep Space D6. I think I talked about that. That's like a spaceship game where you're rolling the dice trying to shoot the people attacking your ship. Well, if you go to boardgamegeek.com, they have uh they have some house rules that people have made up. They they've had some expansions people have made up. So it's a really good place to go this this uh boardgamegeek.com to find some uh some additional content for your games. But anyway, there's one game that I found through the group, which is uh, the print and play group. I think it's Martin's print and play group. group, uh, group. Uh, this game is called Fortune, Fame, and Glory. Okay, and this was free to print off of Board Game Geek, Fortune, Fame, and Glory. And I want to say that there's 25 or 30 cards you print out, okay, and you lay them up. It looks like if you picture an eye, it looks like an eye where you start with one card in a column, then two, then three, and then there's a several layers of four, then it goes three, two, one. So it looks like an eye if you're looking at it when you set up on the table. And all you do is you flip over the first card on the left and you, you chart a path all the way to the right. And you have to go all the way across three times and you fight the boss battle. So you flip a card. So you flip your first card and it says, um, you know, there's a guard at the gate. Well, you roll a D6. And let's just say it says if you roll a one to three, you slip by the guard unnoticed. Four, five, or six, you got to fight the guard. And then you have your fight, and it tells you how much health he has, and it tells you um, what his attack level is, and then it tells you what you get if you win the fight. And so in the attack, you just roll two dice and compare it to his, and then you factor in your attack level. And that can go up or down as you find things during the game. So some, the, the battles take a while because if he's got four health and you have four health, someone's got to win four rounds to, to win the battle is what it is. So then you flip over another card and it says, oh, you got arrested. And you roll the one to six and it'll say, you know, one, you take ten lashes and you lose health. Uh, if you roll a two or a three, you just lose gold. If you roll a six, you escape scot-free. So each card that you flip over has, I want to say, like a, a good, a bad, and a in-between. Not all of them, but, but that's the idea. So, so it's never all bad. It's never all good. So you uh -huh. can flip over a card and you can say, oh, you, you found an inn. And you can rest at the inn. And uh, you can get some health and some food in the whole bit. And uh, there's, there's a couple things in there, like every four cards, you got to use up a food a food token. Uh, you have these two um, fate rolls where you can actually adjust the dice roll by two at any time, which comes in handy if you if you go into a, a an inn or a camp and you come across somebody and you roll the dice and they're going to fight you. But if you adjust it by two, you actually sit and have a meal with them, which is what you'd rather do because you're trying yeah. to you're trying to you, you don't want to battle. You're trying to avoid all the 
battles you can. Make bread. Break yeah. bread. Not Break each other. bread. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's a couple of uh, people that you meet in the in, uh, as you flip over the cards, and sometimes they'll join you, and sometimes they'll fight you, and sometimes nothing. They just they just say hi, and you go on your way. It's a real simple game. You just flip over the card. You go from left to right. When you're done, you shuffle. You you put them on the table, and and you go back again. And uh, it it's so simple to play. It's so fun. Ingenious idea. This print and play game. It really is. I, I could almost see even a, a a sports game like this where you you know you flip the card and you kind of you follow along the game whether it's hockey or football or you know whatever and and different things happen during the game as you're flipping the cards and you choose which path you want to take and if you flip over the card uh maybe it's a turnover or maybe it's you know uh two quick touchdowns you know what I mean I I could see this working so well with mm-hmm. so many different games this this was really cool so yeah uh it, oh and before I friend, the artwork on the back of the cards are gorgeous. They look like the old um the old inscriptions in the old books. You know how they, they look the, the what are the, the oh, like or the something engravings, like almost like the engravings. engravings. They, they are just they're in black and white and they're absolutely gorgeous. I was like, wow, I was quite impressed with the artwork on these cards. It really gives you this old, old feel to this game. So yeah, check check that one out over at Board Game Geek, Fortune, Fame, and Glory print and play game. So those are the a couple I wanted to mention. So I and I know you've been playing a bunch of stuff. So what do you got? Let's see. I'm actually uh picked up on Steam for really cheap and will debut this tonight on our uh, Friday night on my channel and ask Uncle Ron and get some more Twitch hours and Train Sim World 2020. It's like half it was like fifty dollars and I got it for twenty two. Okay. With like six different routes. So we're going to drive some trains around. I've been playing this uh, other non sports things, some Eve Online, got back into that. And then my, where I am, got invaded by some things. And now I can't really do much of anything because I'm never down to fight her. Just ask Ed Becky. Play the music. Play the music. I'm a lover, not a fighter. There we go. <laughs> And uh, as far as the channel is concerned, you know, now that the holidays are over, I uh, started my 2020 baseball replay doing 1978. I uh, played the first week of that. And then on Sunday afternoons, we'll be finishing the 1986 football replay. So playing lots of stuff. And, of course, offline, I'm due for, I think, the next, when the Islanders hit game 25, which I think is either this game or the next, I'll do an update on the channel. It's been really fascinating because I've never done a full season strat hockey replay before. And I guess we can kind of get more into that when we're talking about the actual topic of the show. The other thing I did, because this really is a monkey see and monkey do business, was I bought the Steam version of One Deck Dungeon. Yeah, which that's the one I, I picked up the cards and dice version right for Christmas. Yes. And I think we might have talked about it actually in the last Yeah, that video show, show we did. Yeah, whatever. we did the video show. And and so but then I saw they had a Steam version, which let me tell you, without the Steam version, I wouldn't have figured out how to play this game. It's not a difficult game to play. It's, it's you're flipping over cards and rolling dice, but there is so many little things in the game. And each character oh, you need a hell of a lot of luck too, because it's dice rolls. Yeah, and that's the other thing about the game that, excuse me, I enjoy this game, but boy, it is so, so frustrating uh, when you roll the dice. I rolled 15 dice the other day, 15 dice, and I had um, uh, 14 out of the 15 be three or less, and I, and I just instantly died. I mean, what other chances you roll 15 dice and 14 of them are three or less, and Hey, you get five ones. It's a Yahtzee, right? Can't you score 50 points Jeepers, for that? Jeepers, creepers. I mean, you can manipulate the dice. You can use some of your skills to manipulate it or trade them in or whatever, but you can't manipulate them that much when you roll that bad. It seems to me, and I've played it a little bit, but you know, the advantage of a computer game that saves itself is that once you get frustrated, you quit it, and you can go back and go, oh, no, I left it there. Um, is that... There's some good role playing elements to it, uh, and all the frustration of the bad things of Dungeons and Dragons and the serious role playing games. Where look, you might have the advantage, and you go to roll that whatever, and instead of getting the twenty and the sure kill, you roll a one and you're dead. Yeah, yeah. I I actually get very upset when I roll and I see a lot of ones on the table. And then there's one guy you fight that 
if all the ones and threes get taken away, so you can't even use them. So it, it's a brutally difficult game to win. Once you start getting the hang of the game, it's easy to play, and it's really fun because you're trying to – it's much like that – it's a lot like that fuse game I talked about where you got to take the dice and cover up uh, the card. So if you're fighting a traplet, say, you need to put down uh, a four, five, and six blue. And so that's all you need to roll. You know, sometimes it'll say you need a total of 15 red. So you got to roll dice and hopefully you get 15 red. But, yeah, I mean, there's been so many times I've had four dice and I just needed a total of 10. Didn't get it. I rolled one, one, two, three. How do you not get a total of 10 if you're rolling four dice? It's interesting because if you look in the – you can get the Steam-wide stats – and so you can see that they not only do they re- record all your dice rolls, they've recorded everybody's dice rolls. So you can see what they are. I think two came up the most, but it wasn't. It's a 16% chance of any one die coming up at a time. Mm. But that the win percentage was roughly 30%. Yeah, it's, it's brutal to win this game. It really and is. And either, you know, if you understood that going in, that this is not going to be, oh, I'm going to sit down with my six pack of whatever's and my bag of rolled gold pretzels and go, mm, I have fun with this. And you're going blank that stuff 20 minutes into it. Okay, you can understand. But if you know going in that this is going to be, you really got to use your head and think your way through the process, that makes it a more fun. Yeah, game. there are times you roll the dice, you're like, man, I'm dead. I'm dead in the water. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then you sit there and you really work with it and you look at it and you, you get it. It's like, okay, I get it. I got it. Here we go. Good to go. Uh, so, yeah, so there, there's times that um that you, you do work it out, but there's other times you just flat out can't. And uh, I think I played one of the – so the idea is you play through three levels and then you fight the boss. So you use these three levels to build up your character. You try to get uh, extra health. You try to get health potions. You try to uh, build up how many dice you can roll because you're limited in the beginning to how many dice you roll. So each encounter that you go through, you get some kind of loot, it's called, and then you get on to fight the boss battle. Well – yeah, the first I remember the first boss battle I fought. You needed two fives because you got to take the shields down first. Okay, like a lot of it, a lot of these games, you take away the shields, then you can do damage. I I didn't roll two fives, and I just you're dead. That's it. You just take full damage of of the boss, and that was the end of the game. It's like thanks for playing. <laughs> Have a good night. Yeah, but but all all the complaining aside, mechanically it's a sound game. I can see where they're going with this. It can be real fun as long as you get some okay to good dice rolls. The game can be real fun when you do solve the card and and you come out of it unscathed. It's really fun. You do have to make the decisions. Like I say, which what do you want to take? Do you want to take the dice? Do you want to take the the health? Do you want to take you know a skill? Do you want to take the experience points? Because you know you need experience points to carry more dice. So it's an RPG, so to speak, with cards and dice. I think it works well. Uh, the Steam version works just like the the cards and dice game. It's it's. Fantastic! It looks good. It's got good music too, I think, on it as well. So I muted the music. Oh, you do? I like the music. I no, I don't. I don't want music in my games. I think it's good. I really don't. If I want, yeah. I've got a speaker thing beside me, and I can play my own damn tunes. I, I like the the little the music they put in there. But anyway, so uh, so yeah, so uh, so you played that. I played that. Uh, have you beat it yet? Have you beat? Any- uh, no, I haven't really sat down and and played it thoroughly. Thoroughly, I'm still going through it and it's enough to be frustrating it it, it was um yeah I, I i get very frustrated with that but it, i i listened to a couple of reviews on the game and a couple other people that talked about it and they said the same thing it says sometimes it's if you have a bad roll or a bad round just start the whole thing over because you don't play You're catch not gonna up. Beat it. you don't play catch up in this game yeah you need to be going forward at all times if you take any kind of loss or you take any serious amount of damage then yeah, you're you're done. So, but it, it's a it is a fun, enjoyable game, but it is it is maddening, and but I keep going back to it. I do I keep going back to it. <laughs> it's very it's very different, you know. You know, it's not a sports game, but which, which is why I enjoy sports games because you know, you uh you don't die well, from the bosses. Can't catch up in those either. But no, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't. So, anything else beyond that? No, that's pretty much it. All right. So, uh, what do you say we get to the topic du jour? Okay.
Uncle Jesse, you said this time we weren't playing Strip Twister. Oh, no. Is that how you're going to start off 2020? Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. I don't even think I can play regular Twister now without throwing my back out or something. You know what I mean? No, I've never had to worry about Twister. I we tried that back in the day, like everybody did, and it's it's, it, it's kind of fun when you're trying to throw this over here or this over there. But eventually, you get somebody's ass in your face, and you're like, "Oh man!" <laughs> so anyway, not going there. So uh, so let's talk about uh, the topic at hand, Ron. So wh- why why don't you give your definition of some of these of, things that we're talking actual, about? An actual replay against a what if? Yeah, what what, you, what, what is your version of that? What is your definition? Well, of Just so we can, when, when when we have a discussion here, we're on the same page, and our listeners can can hear what we think it is, and then they can weigh in. There's, there, it's basically it's a stock, an actual replay. I would consider to be like a stock replay. If you bought, if you went out and got, let's say, a set of Strat cards the 25 or however many players that they play for baseball or for the hockey. I think it's what 17 and two goalies. Okay. And you get the actual schedule and you just play the games, uh, you know, in football, if the Cowboys and giants played in week four, then you would play the Cowboys and giants in week four. It, it pretty much is the most common replay that there is. Now there are some offshoots. In baseball, you can go as played, provided that everybody's carded. And so you with lineups and such like that. Uh, you can do with the other other things uh, and other sports, but I think it takes a lot more work. Uh, a lot of people who do playoffs, for instance, that would be uh, an actual thing. If I took, let's say, the Patriots and played them through the playoffs last year, their, their opponents. But basically the act of taking two teams and looking on the schedule and saying okay i'm playing that doesn't mean it's a single team replay doesn't mean it's a nice played replay it's just the basic i'm doing this i'm a giant fan i'm a cowboy fan i'm not sure why uh they played and we're, i'm going to pretend to simulate this i'm going to simulate this game that's an actual replay okay uh, what what if would be taking any of those variables and changing it uh, they can be from what you did on your channel. I want, I want to take Tom Brady off the Patriots. I'm going to put him, let's say on the Miami dolphins. And so I'm going to simulate the 2018 season really quick with the dolphins as Tom Brady is the quarterback and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Is that who Miami's quarterback? It doesn't really no, matter. No, I think it, was, my- it was Tannehill. I think uh, Ryan Tannehill. Last year, and this make- was last year. Yeah. And, and put him on the Patriots and see what, what happens or you take uh uh, greatest teams what could the 66 dodgers do against the 75 reds or can you match the 72 dolphins and the 85 bears or even a, a draft league you just put everybody in the pot draft teams and so what would happen if bird and magic were on the same team or steph curry and uh uh, poor Zingas from, from Milwaukee. Uh, those are really what ifs. And that's, in my view, just going much more into your imagination and you being in, in control as opposed to an actual, which in my view is, you know, subsets of this. You can do a single team, you can do a full league, you can do it as played, but it's essentially you're just taking the stock stuff that comes with the game and doing something right. With it. Now, a handful of years ago, I actually played my first sports sim. Uh, it was, it was, the hockey one was franchise hockey manager. That was the first one I did. Then I also did uh football mogul 2015 or 2016. One of, one of those two. And I remember going into football mogul and I was like, wow, this is fun. I can play any year, any team, because you know, when you're playing Madden, you're, you're locked into that, that year when you're playing Madden. Okay. And you know, I mean, Madden goes back to 92, but that's all you can do. You can't go back any further. So I was pleasantly surprised that I could play 70s and 80s football using football mogul. And the first thing I did, and don't don't ask me why, but the first thing is I, is I found out you could swap players around. So in, I went to 76, and I put Stabler on the Patriots and Grogan on the Raiders. And I was like, I wonder how this would work out if they traded star quarterbacks. Little did I know that was my first what-if 
scenario without even knowing it at the time. I was doing a what if. And I also did that with Franchise Hockey Manager where I would take and trade guys from other teams and and, and play out a scenario. And you that would will... yourself forever for not drafting Clark Gillies for Kansas City. Yeah, I've gone back and I've redrafted the scouts. I, I've done. I've put guys in other teams, and I just had some fun with it. And and those are all what ifs because they were n- not as it was. They were just you know, what if this happened? What if this guy was on his team? What if that? And like and to a point, you said, you know, what if we took the seventy nine Canadians and played the eighty two Oilers? That's another what if scenario. Right. And as far as actual goes. And it was, I think it was this summer that I, I'm still kind of doing this. It's been one long, drawn-out project. But I took the 71 Bruins and the 72 Rangers, uh, uh, 71, 72 Bruins, Rangers. And I'm playing the, the, the Stanley Cup Finals with these two teams, okay? And I went back into either Hockey Reference or NHL.com, and I tried to find the box scores of these games so I could find, A, who was in net, and B, is get as close to the roster for that game that I could because they were alternating players in and out uh, quite a bit in that series, especially the goaltenders. And little did I know that I was doing an actual replay at that point. And I did the same when I did my California Seals uh, was it 74 or 70? The, the shootout replay, you went through the actual schedule and did that. Yeah, year, I right? don't, I think, I don't, it was 73 or 74. I think it was 70. Doesn't matter, you did it. Yeah, well, what I did is I went to the SEAL schedule on Hockey Reference and I found out who was in net and I played the actual goalies for both teams when I did my shootout replay. So for me, uh, an actual replay is trying to get it as close as possible to what was actually played. And a what if for me is to really kind of go off the rails and, yep. and move guys around or play teams that would never play each other or something like that. Now, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's in between that and around that and subsets of that. But for me, that's what it is. Uh, uh, an actual is I'm going to take these two teams that actually played and try to get as close as I can to what really happened that day or that season. And uh, whereas um, the what if is just, again, I'm putting, uh, you know, Bobby Orr uh, on the Blackhawks with Phil Esposito and Tony Esposito, or I'm drafting there, this guy. There's a guy on a Stratomatic form who is a huge St. Louis Cardinal fan. And so he'll take years that the Cardinals didn't achieve what he wanted them to do, which is like only 120 games. And he'll put in like 68 Gibson on a 94 team or something like that, or, uh, or, 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 you know, what are the Cardinal sluggers to try to tilt it? And that's, that's a, what if, you know, it's kind of a mix. I mean, what we do is fiction. And so does it really matter if it's Nicholas Nickleby or the 15th novel of the Star Trek deep space nine series? It's still fiction. You're still creating fiction in your head. Uh, I tend to prefer actual because I'm more of a historical guy, but I've done one ifs. I did a whole series of what ifs with the Patriots, the, the perfect Patriot team. We did what, an eight game, eight games of that. And, you know, I didn't enjoy it any less. Some of it was quite fun. There was a couple of those games that were really, really wild. But, um, Again, kind of like most things in this hobby, there is no wrong answer unless it's pineapple on pizza because that is always and we the wrong we, we know the right answer is yes, pineapple on pizza. Shut up. Oh yeah. Bruins fan. <laughs> there. I got my obligatory pizza. You were wondering how <laughs> you were wondering how I was going to get into pizza reference, didn't you? And I did. Thank you. Thank Way to you. go. We got someone we got someone out there somewhere in our listening audience that keeps track of how many pizza references you make. You know, I I it's not it's probably in the top twenty of my favorite foods, but it's not something I need to eat on a super regular basis. And so I didn't realize until they pointed out you can bring up pizza every show. Kind of like the off color full house jokes. That's Those right. are intentional. Um I mean it really depends on what you want to do. I mean, there are people who not only do as play replays, which would be on the far extreme of an actual, but go to even further to the extreme to go through that people don't exceed how many innings a player pitches or how many at bats they have. 
Or on the other side, you know, let's replay, uh, let's play the 1899 Brooklyn Dodgers against the 2019 Brooklyn Dodgers, or Brooklyn, Los Angeles Dodgers. They were, they were called the Wonder Bras, by the way, in 1899, or Super Bras or something like that. Superbus. Al Red Sox fatal, though. Uh, and, and that's the other what if, because you're talking different styles and all that. And it, yeah, it makes for a good debate and fun stuff, but it doesn't prove anything. Just like if I played a seven game series between, uh, the Bruins and the St. Louis blues from last year, and you played a seven game series and you guys out there played a seven game series. Uh, we d- if you do that series 10 times, how many match St. Louis winning three in Boston? Yeah. You know, it, I mean, it, 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 for me, I don't know which one I like better because I find that if I'm going to try to do an actual replay, first off is some time involved. Cause you got to do some research. You do. You got to look, if you really want to do it correctly, you got to really look into who is playing that day and try to get that, as accurate as you can, and sometimes you can't. I mean, especially with hockey, because you, you might be able to find out the lines of the day, but you don't know who's on the power play and shorthanded and how that all works. So you can get it as close as possible, but it does take work. The other thing is 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 injuries. What do you do if you're doing this actual thing and a guy gets hurt? Do you well? He didn't get hurt in real life, so do you injure him in your game, or do you ignore no, the injury? No, I have I have it set in the action PC line, and when I get strapped baseball this year, is that injuries are same game only, and so some let's say, uh, Cal Ripken gets hurt. Now Cal Ripken went seventeen years without missing a game. Do you think? And then the computer would say, "Oh, Cal's going to miss two weeks." I actually had this happen once a thousand years ago. What do I do? Um, when it it's easier to do on the computer to sit there and say, you just pump in the lineups and all play the games. Uh, just to say, no, injury is, is that day only. So it doesn't mess things up. But, but again, but if you're doing a football it, game, okay, let's just say you're doing a famous, you know, a Theismann, Starback, Redskins, Cowboys game, right. and one of them gets hurt in the first quarter. And and that actually happened to me. We talked about my Pittsburgh Steel Tampa Bay Buccaneer replay that I did. In one of the games, and I think it was Action PC actually, uh, Terry Bradshaw went out for the game in the first quarter. And the backup yeah. came in. Now, again, I let it ride, and they still won whatever it was, 38 to nothing or whatever it was over the Buccaneers because that was the experiment that I was doing. But, yeah, the backup quarterback played three and a quarter quarters or three quarters of that game. So what what do you do? Because Bradshaw would have played the game. He didn't get hurt in real life. So how – Actual, do you what play? I do once the once the sim starts, reality goes out, is done. Okay, you now what? Now what about let, let's just say in, in baseball or even hockey, if you if the goalie gets lit up or whatever. So you're playing a baseball um, actual play, and and you know that Clemens pitched seven or eight innings. Do you leave him for seven or eight during no, your replay? Or, I don't. Do, or do you say, well, I'm taking him out if he gets lit up. I'm going to play him all nine. I mean, that that's where, where I feel trying to do an actual replay, you can get a little too crazy. It can be a yeah, little. I, I don't do that. I, I did for Don Larson when he, after he died. I redid his perfect game. He lost it in the first inning. And so he was going to stay in until – reasonably so, but Billy Martin made three errors in the field behind him, and Larson ended up leaving the leaving what should have been a 6-2 win. He left with the game, game tied at six in the eighth inning, and Mickey Mantle bailed his butt out. Uh, but no, one, for me, once again, I don't want to say reality goes out the window, because I've done a number of tribute games or Re, you know, all, all the replays that I do are based on actual games. But once the sim starts, then you do what the sim dictates that you should do. So if I, let's say we did, I did Roger Clemens' 20 strikeout game against Seattle from 86, okay? That was probably one that was replayed a bunch of times in New England. Nesson still shows it every other, every other week, you know, probably gets better ratings than the infomercials for the up chucker um uh, look if he gets lit up in the first inning he gets lit up in the first inning why am i trying to save him for you're playing the uh, 
once the game starts or once the lineups are on the pad, it's a choose your own adventure. Yeah, and th- that's a tough. Th- I find yeah. that is the tough thing about an ash because if you if you specifically were playing that game for that pitcher, or for this goalie, or for Wayne Gretzky, or Bobby, well, or or Larry what, Bird, and they get hurt, it's like man, this is Rex the oh, whole replay. Stuck. You know, and Hi- Eric from Higher Ground Gaming made the good point. He said, "Ron, that had to be one of the tougher games to do." The, talking about the the World Series perfect game because you could. You could play that game a thousand times and not get it and not even come close. I thought Larson pitched pretty well under the circumstances. He had a good year in 56. But to sit there and say, okay, I'm going to replay this game, but you're going to throw a perfect game for me or go the distance, whether you threw a perfect game. It's just you play the game as it is. I had a... PC football game. This might have been 99 or 2000. Long, long time ago, okay? And uh, I don't even know what it was called, but I I had it on the computer, and I decided to play the season, and I took the uh, San Francisco 49ers, and I was like, oh, this will be fun. Steve Young and the whole bit. First game of the year, first half, Steve Young gets hurt out for the season. So what what do you think I did? I was playing San Francisco to play with Steve. I I I I either quit the game or I reset. But yeah, it's like there is no way I'm going to play out the rest of the season with with Young hurt for the year. If he was going to miss a game or two, I might gut it out. But I wanted I wanted to play this game with Steve. No, Belichick Young. didn't have that option when Brady got his knee roll the opening game of the 08 season. But I but I know where you're going with it. It all really comes down to what you perceive as enjoyable. As you said, you don't want to play that uh, 49ers backup in, in that. I mean, you got, you got yourself all excited to, to do a Steve young season. Yep. And who you got instead, you know, damn it. I want the big Mac. Sorry. You get the filet of fish. We'll put the special sauce on it. You notice I did something besides pizza uh, for the, no, you get the fillet of fish with the thousand island dressing. No, I want the Big Mac. Sorry, we're all out of hamburger. Well, that's why I th- I think sometimes the the what ifs are a little bit easier because it's more loosey goosey. You, you're not too worried about that, and you're not going to get your heart broken if somebody's hurt because you're you're playing a what if. Like, all right, a good example in my what if action PC hockey. I'm playing a '74 season with the Bruins, and as as you probably know, I put Trechiak and Kalimov and um, Kalov. I took the three Russians from the 72 season and put them on the 74 Bruins. One of them's already hurt. And I don't know if it was Mikhailov or Kalimov, but one of the four. So I had, the two, I, I had Esposito with two Russians as my first line. That was my what if playing action PC in 74. I thought that would be Tom fun. Terry been to your house to personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Well, they, they all made up after 72. They all made up. They're all friends now. They all drink vodka together in Canada. That's what happened. But anyway, so that was my scenario. Okay, that was my scenario. And one of them's already hurt. And Trechiak is playing terrible. So uh, Jill Bay is my, my goal to goalie. So th- this what if has not quite played to what I thought it uh, would be. Let me let me give you the flip side of that and what good can come out of it. Because the last full season baseball replay I did was as played 82. And I played you know, 78, 84 games, somewhere along that line. And again, that was a season where all four divisions were going to come in within five games of each, you know, four, five game races and, and all that. And so you just never know. No, I had one of the four playoff teams. And so, so it kind of turned into a what if because California made it. But Milwaukee, Atlanta, and St. Louis, St. Louis, I think, was like 15 games out of first place. So I got Montreal and Los Angeles, California, and Baltimore, who should have won the East in real life anyway. Thanks, R. Weaver. And I had Montreal and Baltimore in the World Series. And Montreal won the World Series. Did it take anything away that Montreal did that? Hell no, it made for me a better story. And again, it comes down to uh, we're doing storytelling, whether we're doing it for ourselves when we play solo or when we do this stuff on YouTube or Twitch or whatever, we're doing storytelling. And so having the Expos break through to win a championship made for an incredible story 
It does. Would I have liked to have seen St. Louis and Milwaukee? Not particularly. Milwaukee had no bullpen. St. Louis should have wiped the floor. On the other hand, when I did the 78 football replay, I ended up with Dallas and Pittsburgh. Was I disappointed? No. That was a great championship game. Both teams scored the last time they had the football. Pittsburgh had to drive down the field with time running. Out. No, it didn't. It really didn't. So, but again, they were based on you know, the baseball was more of an as was an as played for the most part. But the football, you know, it's, and they're both stock replays. So I guess that's the question that, uh, that I guess maybe we'll answer in one second. But we're going to put out to the the audience here is, what do you prefer playing? Do you prefer to play actual? rosters and games or do you like the what ifs and and uh you know if you do the what ifs you know what are your go-to what if scenarios and if you do actual how crazy do you get trying to get I, those actual I, rosters i do the what ifs in golf and tennis which i don't play a lot of on stream because people don't i don't know why i'm looking at the camera because this is an audio show um because people don't really want to watch, and that's fine. You know, I'm able to personally prove that that doesn't break me up at all. But you know, you can't get an accurate simulation of a golf season, and you can't really get an accurate simulation of a tennis season. So, what for most of my what ifs, you know, what if Pete Sampras played John McEnroe in a final, or what if Andre Agassi and Bjorn Borg played? You know, with Jimmy Connors and Rod, I mean, th that sort of thing. Jack Nicholas against Tiger Woods. Those are the what ifs I do. And I get a great deal of pleasure doing those because, again, you're playing the game in between your ears. And so, what is it that tickles your fancy the most? Yeah, so we'll throw that out to you guys. What do you think? Again, what do you guys? Uh, and I'll, I'll give you my feelings on that. Is I'm all over the place. I, I absolutely enjoy playing actual because I want to play the. If I play actual, usually it's going to be a shorter project. It's going to be a one-off, one game, or it's going to be a just a playoff series or something. Because for me to try to put in the time to do an actual for an entire season, that would be ridiculous amounts of time. Even for an entire playoffs, if I took an entire you know Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, like all the teams, not just like the finals or something like that. That would be a lot of work to try to find out who was this and who was that. And the other thing is, too, is when you're playing actual, it's already been done. And so I, there is some kind of alert to see what your results are going to be to something that's already been done. But sometimes I really enjoy seeing something different. You know, what if it, in your playoffs instead of Dallas Pittsburgh in the Super Bowl you know what what if it was uh Dallas New England because New England actually had the better season you know that would some that's something well, I would play I would play championships both Los Angeles and New England blew 10 point leads in the first half of their respective conference championships it could have easily have been the yeah. Rams and the Patriots yeah. or let's go let's go back a year if uh they call that pass interference in New Orleans and New Orleans goes on to play New England in the Super Bowl how would that have played you could out? Could have had the Chiefs in the Super Bowl too. Could have had the Chiefs, was... yeah, exactly. So I mean, so, so I I like the what I don't want to say I like the what ifs better because what I'm playing, you know, my like I say, my Stanley Cup Finals that I'm setting up. I want to have the goalies. I want to get as close as possible because I want to see if I can duplicate that. So sometimes I want to see if I can duplicate the outcome or see what outcome I get. And other times I want to get silly. I want to get crazy. Okay, I, I put Reggie Jackson on the Red Sox in '77 in my action PC uh, season. Okay, that is just crazy. Okay, but it's a scenario I created in my mind, and I'm playing it out, and I'm enjoying it, and it's something that would never happen in real life. It that is the ultimate what if right there. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so I pr I would probably say I lean more towards the what ifs because they. They scratch that itch of what if this guy played on this team? But what if this team won? What would the results be? And again, it's all fictional. We're all just reading stories here, and none of it's real, and none of it should be taken serious. But for me, I enjoy scratching the itches. Like I say, I put Brady on the Dolphins and simulated the season in action. That PC. was fun. That was fun. And and uh, you know, I, I will probably do that again. You know, um, I thought about picking up the current season and and playing that out to see what would happen if he was on another. 
team, and it only takes five or ten minutes to simulate the season. And I was, I think I uh, did a video on that too on my YouTube channel. You and I was stopping every couple of games and checking to see what happened. I was keeping an eye on the Patriots and keeping an eye on the Dolphins and seeing who did what. And it was really fun. And it was it, what was. I think the result is this was 2018. This was last season. So when he was on the Dolphins, uh, I think he almost had as many interceptions as he had touchdowns. But they did make the playoffs with Miami. I think I don't know if they won a game and then lost or just lost in the first round. They didn't get very far. But he, but he did get them to the playoffs. And New England, I think, uh, just, just missed the playoffs is what happened. Uh, so, But those were so fun. They really were, and uh, it's it's all you, there's no you don't need to really do any research at all about who was playing what. You just set it up and go. So for me, sometimes it comes down to a time thing that I just want to play something and have fun, and other times it's like no, I'm going to sit down like when I was doing my seventy two, uh, not the Canada Cup, the um, seventy two Canada Russia series, the sum- summit, the summit series. Uh, I did, uh, I think it was on the Play dot com website. Somebody actually. Uh, listed all the games and all the lines for all the games because they had different rosters from different games, and some people didn't go to Russia. Some people did. Some people got hurt. And right so, on the first training camp that year, too. Yeah, so I have exactly who played in each game of the eight games, so I could do a really, really good actual replay for that in in uh, either Action PC or uh, uh, the, on the, the – the um the uh what's what's the play uh, the, uh hockey blast hockey, hockey blast hockey yeah. blast I actually did play a game in hockey blast with that so but now I have the actual rosters for that so I could get really really um accurate with that to see what happened in fact I played a couple of games already and it's been fantastic I played in a couple di- I played on the the hockey blast I played it with something else and it was a good time so so yeah so I can do that summit series and get as accurate as I want to get with that. Although I might do the what if run and put the, uh, the other goalie in instead of Tretiak just to see what would happen with the game. That would be very interesting. Or maybe do a game nine, you know, winner takes all game nine. Didn't they do a couple exhibitions in Sweden? Yeah. They they were nasty too. They were real nasty. So, yeah. So, all right. So let's wrap this up. Episode 24. It's the, uh, the actual versus the what if. We want all your thoughts on that. So here we go. We're closing things out. That was my chair, by the way. <laughs> I got a real squeaky chair in case anybody's wondering. That, one. that was a chair. But anyway, you've been listening to episode 24 of Digital the Dice Podcast. I've been Dave. I've been joined by Ron. Ways to get a hold of us. DigitalTheDice.com is the website. 978-751-DICE. And also our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash digital to dice. Ron, thanks for joining me today. As always, a pleasure. All right, we'll talk to everybody later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.